Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. What if economics measured the things that actually improved your quality of life? Studies in positive psychology have found that genetics and your family and work relationships contribute 90% of what makes you happy. Income, education, GDP, not so much. What's needed, says one economist, is an economy of well-being. Hi, I'm Mark Anielski. I'm the author of The Economics of Happiness and also the author of the new book called An Economy of Well-Being, Common Sense Tools for Building Genuine Wealth and Happiness. I'm an economist and I live in Edmonton. And I also run my own consulting firm that does economic strategy for companies and nations. Traditional economic measures such as gross domestic product, or GDP, tell us very little about how people are doing. In fact, car crashes, earthquakes, and wildfires all improve the GDP. The basic premise of the book is that we can and should develop a new economic paradigm which makes well-being the central organizing feature of economies, rather than just material and GDP growth, we were going to measure success based on how well we're doing in terms of the conditions of well-being in society. As Inelski explains, the word economy has Greek roots and actually means the condition of well-being in the household. Inelski has worked on well-being in countries like Bhutan and Tahiti and cities like Singapore. He's even brought well-being accounting to small town Alberta. And the other place we did this was the town of Valley View, Alberta, a little town of 1,800 people near Peace River, in which we asked everybody from grade 6 students all the way up to 80-year-olds to self-rate their well-being, came up with an index for well-being for Valley View, which now will help guide municipal governance and decision-making. So what did he ask folks about well-being? We learned some interesting things. We asked people, what do they love about the community? Open-ended questions. They told us they love the small town, they love the feeling of just being able to buy everything locally. They love their personal safety. They feel safe on the street. We asked them what they would like to improve. If they were mayor for the day, what would they improve? After a series of open-ended questions, they compiled a detailed picture of how people were actually doing in Valley View and what they thought about their town. We learned that people really didn't like the aesthetic feel of Main Street. So they said, maybe that should be our priority. So we said to town council, citizens want to beautify Main Street. What are we going to do? Let's talk to the business people. Uh, they formed a Valley View coalition, so a group of citizens who now will represent the well-being interests of the community. The well-being assessment allows the town to track how citizens are actually doing and what they care about. These are then turned into key performance indicators. So now we're going to be tracking people's well-being from a, an experiential perspective, and that's going to complement, it's going to drive and help the strategic planning process of council. We can literally have citizens say, what's your perceived return on investment that you're getting from your taxes? Measuring well-being helps us spend public money for the actual good of the people. And we're going to also affect the way governments manage their assets, so-called asset management system. So it's not just about roads and pipes and water treatment systems. It's about how people feel about their neighbors, how they get along, how they trust each other, how they perceive the natural environment or the air quality. Next time on Green Energy Futures, we learn how modern balance sheets utterly fail to accurately report on the true status of our assets and liabilities. Learn more at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. You